Hey everyone, today's lesson is uh, sections 4.5 and then a little bit from 4.6. Both sections cover inverse functions and I'm guessing this will be somewhat of a new idea for you. Um, before we start in with inverses, however, I wanna just make sure you're good with the last couple days. Um, you will have a Schoology quiz at this point and it's labeled 4.1 through 4.4 and you just take the quiz right on Schoology, um, you get one attempt. It does go in the assessment category, so that's why we're just giving you one attempt, right or wrong. Um, you can take as much time as you need, so if you don't do it today or you start it today and finish it tomorrow, um, that that is fine. So off to the side, I have solve the seventh root of x raised to the fifth equals negative 4.8. So if you recall from the last couple days, to undo a radical, you can raise it to the seventh power. And to undo a power, you can root a fifth root. Or all in one step and probably a little more efficient is to write the problem from radical form to rational exponent form. So you know your power is your numerator, radical is your denominator. And then if you're going to solve for a power, if it was x squared, we would just square root. And now rather than again doing it in two steps, you can just raise the 5 sevenths to the reciprocal power of 7 fifths. And of course, if we do that on the left-hand side, we want to do that on the right-hand side to balance. And now you would pick up your calculator and you would type in negative 4.8 to the 7 fifths power. And I got negative 8.9895, if you want to round at that point. Um, you could go back and check your answer. I put parentheses around my negative 4.8. It's not necessary in this case, since my both my power and my root are odd but it would absolutely be necessary if my power was even. Um, and if my root was even, I wouldn't be able to do this because you can't even root negative numbers. Um, so just be, maybe just to be safe, I would anytime you're raising a number from here, the step to the, the final step to a power, just encompass that in parentheses to be safe. All right, on to inverses. Here is your formal definition of an inverse. So if you have a relation um, or a function for that matter, if you're asked to find the inverse of a function, you switch the coordinates of the ordered pair. So we will look, we'll start out real basic. If this is my relation, you can see the set of points. If I'm going to inverse those, um, that relation, I literally flip X and Y. So now my X coordinates become what my Y coordinates were and my Y coordinates become what my X coordinates were. Okay, so just a really basic, um, example of what an inverse is. Okay, so you flip x and y. Now if it's in an equation and not a set of points, these are the steps in finding the inverse. So first step would be you exchange x and y. So you you literally switch them. In fact, I will go down. Um, looking at this example here of y equals 2x plus 1, I'm going to switch x and y. Remind yourself f of x is really just y. So your y is now here and your x is now here. Okay, that's step one. Step two is solve for y. Okay, so step two is where the work is, clearly. So if you're going to solve this equation for y, you're going to subtract one over first. Okay, so subtract one. And then you're going to divide both sides by two. So it's very easy math, nothing you can't handle at this point, right? Divide both sides by two. And you end up here. My recommendation to you is to break this um, fraction into two parts. So it would look um, like this, obviously one half X minus one half down here. Um, also note the notation, when you find the inverse, inverse notation is F to the negative one of X. Okay, and I can scroll back up here. Step number three, don't forget the function notation. And function notation, this looks like a negative exponent, but it's simply just notation. So you aren't simplifying anything any further. Like this function is the inverse of the original. Okay, so this linear function and this linear function are inverses of one another. All right, let's look at another one. So find the inverse and then we're gonna um, kind of dive more deeply into it and take a look at how it graphically looks as well. 
So actually, why don't you pause this one and see if you can find the inverse first. All right, so step one, switch X and Y. That's the easy step. Then you um, solve for Y, so I subtracted six first. And then you're gonna divide everything by negative three. And I would simplify that a step further. So when you divide everything by negative three, you get negative one third and then negative six divided by negative three would be plus two. So just be careful in your um, simplifying, of course. Okay, now I do wanna take a look at this graphically because I know you will be asked to graph these. The red is the original, or sorry, the blue is the original, the red is the inverse. Again, note the inverse notation, right? F to the negative first. Um, when you take a look at these on your graph, you can feel free to grab your graphing calculator. These would be pretty easy to just graph on paper as well because they are both linear. So if I show you, this is just a screenshot of my calculator and the blue is the original linear line. So y-intercept at six, you can tell the slope is negative three to the right one, down three to the right one. So you can check that. The inverse, the red line starts at two and slope is one third. So down one to the right three, et cetera. Um, when you graph a function in blue and its inverse in red, um, they should reflect over the line y equals x. So I'm just going to sketch in the line y equals x here. Okay, so that would be this green line here. Inverses, functions and their inverses always reflect over the line y equals x. So if you take this blue um, function, for example, this point is um, 0, 6. If I flip that or reflect it over the line y equals x, it's now going to flip over to 6, 0. Plus, if you think about, if you have a point, 0, 6, if you switch it, 6, 0, you will get the inverse. So you can visually verify this, or I could have just graphed the blue line and taken points from the blue line and flipped them to get my red line. Okay, so another example here, easy point, 0, 2, if I flip that. Um, uh, 0, 2, if I flip that would be 2, 0. And you can see that on the blue. So any point, however, I mean, I can take this point here, reflect it over the line y equals x, and I would end up down here. So it's kind of a cool connection for you. All right, adding on a bit. Um, if you graph a function and want to know if the inverse is a function, because it may or may not be, you can do the horizontal line test. Now, I know you're familiar with the vertical line test. The vertical line test will tell you that this is a function. So for example, if I take a vertical line um, here over on this one, right? If I take a vertical line and just start going through, um, it's a function, it's a parabola, I know it's a function, never gonna go through two points at once, right? If I graphed its inverse, I could tell if it's a function a lot by using the vertical line test, or I can just do the horizontal line test on the original parabola, the original function, and I can see right away, oh, I'm going through two points. That means its inverse is not a function. Okay, so the horizontal line test isn't absolutely necessary. It just saves you a step. So if I would be doing, I could graph both the function and its inverse and always use the vertical line test, or I can save myself some time and just use the horizontal line test. And I'll come back to that as we look at a couple more examples here. Um, okay, so this example, uh, well, actually, maybe pause the video and give this one a shot as well. So see if you can find the inverse and then graph both the function and its inverse. All right, so you switch X and Y, and then you solve for Y. So I'm gonna subtract the three over. And then how do you solve for Y when it's squared? You would square root both sides, or you can raise both sides to the one half power. It's the same thing as you recall, right? Reciprocal two and you get one half. Also notice the function notation, or inverse notation, excuse me. So that would be my inverse. If you graph the blue, you recognize that's a parabola with a vertical shift up three. Um, 
And then if you notice, this is a square root function with a horizontal shift to the right three. So all stuff you covered in chapter three, um, I will um, unveil the graph, however. So, uh, oops, sorry, you know what? I forgot a plus or minus over here, but I can toss it in there. So this <laughs> is gonna look a little awkward. Um, this is a plus or minus, right? When you square root something, you have to remember to plus or minus that. So just to clarify my graph. So the blue is the x squared plus three, right? Vertical shift up three parabola. The red is a square root function. And if I graph the positive, that's the upper part of it. And if I graph the negative, that's the lower part. If I toss in the line y equals x here, you can see that the blue function reflex over the line y equals x to get your red inverse. You can probably, if you're, especially if you're visual, you can tell. Um, is the inverse a function? It is not, right? Vertical line test says, nope, that's not a function. The horizontal line test of the original parabola also tells me that its inverse is not a function. So there's a visual example for you as well. Um, one quick thing on the, um, since the inverse is not a function, oftentimes textbooks like for your inverse to be a function. So if you look at this parabola, where would you have to restrict your blue parabola to make the inverse a function? So if you think about if I inverse 0, 3, that's 3, 0. If I inverse any of these points, that's going to give me these. Well, I don't want these because that's what's making it not be a function. So if I restrict my quadratic to only positive x values, then the inverse is going to be also restricted to only positive x values. And I can kind of put these side by side here, right? Um, so now, and I should have really restricted my blue, sorry. So my parabola is really only the right-hand side, the positive, and so the inverse also is only the positive. Likely, your homework won't ask you to, to do any sort of restriction. So if you get the basic idea of switching X and Y and solving for Y um, and graphing these, you will be totally fine. Okay, one more, we'll just bring the power up a notch. So again, um, if you switch X and Y, I'll give you a second to do that work, switch X and Y and resolve for Y to find the inverse of this third degree polynomial here. So switching x and y, then adding 2, and then to get rid of a third power, you can cube root both sides or raise it to the one-third power, so whatever you prefer. So here is the um, inverse, and I should use inverse notation there as well. So this is the inverse. Um, I also tested some points off to the side, so just to give you an idea, because this is probably one that you're not as familiar with. So I plugged in these x values into the third degree function and got these output. So just one quick visual here, or talk through. Negative two cubed, negative two times negative two times negative two is negative eight, minus two is negative 10. So you can kind of verify all of those if you'd like. And then I can just literally flip these from the blue function to the red inverse. So notice I just switched my X and Y um, rather than retesting over here because that's kind of tedious, right? So use your, your knowledge of just flip-flopping points if you want. So now if I go to the graph, I really could just plot these points like negative two and negative 10 is way down here negative one, negative three is here, et cetera. And you would start to see this pattern as well as the inverse points in red, negative two, um, sorry, now X is here though, right? So negative 10, negative two, negative three, negative one, et cetera, et cetera. And you see that red. Um, again, I could put in the line Y equals X and you will see um, the reflection over the line Y equals X, quite nicely on this one, in fact, right? You can really tell like this is reflected, this is reflected, etc. So there you have it. All right, this is technically 4.6, just in case you're referencing your book <clears throat> for the um, further examples. So it's just more on inverse functions. 
Um, the last thing we're going to talk about is how do you know if two functions are inverses? So if you recall, I'm just going to go back to my graph real quickly. If two functions are inverses, they will always reflect over the line y equals x. So that green line is y equals x. So when you composition a function and its inverse, the output should be x because that's the line of reflection. So if I take the original function f and composition it with the inverse, and I do get x, then I know that f and inverse are truly inverses of each other. Okay, and then the reverse, if I take the inverse and composition it with the function, I should also get x. So just to show you a quick example of how that works in action, I have two functions down here. So f of x is 3x plus 12, g of x is 1 third x minus 4, and the directions are determine if they are inverses. Okay, so using my rules, um, first and foremost, I am going to call the function, the blue, I've changed it to blue, and I changed g of x to my inverse. It doesn't matter which one you wanna call the inverse because you're just gonna verify this or not. So I'm gonna say the inverse is um, my g of x and I also color coordinated that, coordinated that to red. Okay, so first step is you're taking f, you should probably write this down in the box, by the way or refer to this video if needed, but F compositioned with the inverse, and we've done compositions already, so this isn't new to you. Okay, so I'm gonna take F, which is blue, and then I'm going to substitute the inverse in for the X of the function. So I, again, kind of tried to color coordinate that. So the blue is my function, three X plus 12. I put the red in for the X, and then I'm gonna simplify. Right, so I'm going to distribute this 3 through, okay, so 3 times 1 third is 1x, 3 times negative 4 is negative 12, and then plus 12, and you can probably see that the negative 12 and the plus 12 cancel out, and I get x. So going back up to my rule, if you get x, that means they're inverses. Now, there are instances where one gives you x and the other does not, so you have to verify both of these. It's kind of a lot of work, right? Okay, so now I'm going to verify the opposite. I'm going to take f, the inverse, and composition it with the original function. So I'm taking the red inverse function, 1 third x minus 4, but I'm replacing the x with function of f, right? Okay, so I'm going to distribute the 1 third through. So 1 third times 3 is x, 1 third of 12 is 4, minus 4, the 4s cancel out, and sure enough, I get x. That is how you verify two functions are truly inverses of one another. Okay, we'll do another one here. Why don't you give this one a shot? Pause the video. Okay, I color coordinated again. So I'm gonna say that the blue is my function and um, G is my inverse. Okay, so showing F of composition of inverse equals x, so I put the inverse into the x of f. Distributing the three through, I'm gonna get one x plus three halves minus two, and I can already see that does not equal x, right? So really at that point, I'm done. I mean, if one of them doesn't work out, it doesn't matter if the other does. These two functions are not inverses. No, 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 right? If you wanna see the work, the verification of the other, it also did not work out. All right, moving on to one more. Go beyond linear here. So determine if this quadratic and this square root function are inverses of each other. So maybe again, pause the video and give it a shot. So I'm gonna do f of g of x. g is my inverse though, okay? So I'm taking x squared plus one, replacing the x with the square root function, the inverse function. Okay, remember when you square a square root, it will undo it. So I'm left with x minus one plus one, and the ones cancel out and I get x. So looking good so far. Now I gotta verify the other way. So if I take the composition of the inverse with the function, now I'm taking the square root function, x square root of x minus one, and I'm replacing the x with the function 
Okay, inside this radical, since it's all one, I can add these ones together so they will cancel out. So I just have the square root of x squared and the square root of x squared is x. So I just verified, yes, indeed, these two, these two um, f of x and g of x are inverses of one another. All right, your homework. Um, here it is also on the assignment calendar. And don't forget you have a quiz. So there is a quiz on Schoology. Let us know if you have any questions about that. It's fairly straightforward. Um, and good luck.